Okay, so now we're at the blueprint section of this video. With everything in mind, I decided to drop several different blueprints and design ideas I had, and I ended up with this. With these blueprints, you can pretty much recreate the exact desk that I made if you wanted to build the same thing. And by all means, feel free to do so. That's why I'm sharing it here with you today. So here's a side profile view of the desk I designed. Each side, each end of the, the table here, the desk will have two pieces of plywood, um, one shaped differently than the other. So the outermost piece is this one here, shaped like an A, and there's an inner piece right here. Here's the sliding table tray, pull-out tray for the 88 key MIDI controller, the desktop above it, and my rack space. So I made this an 8U rack space at an angle. I did cut it off right here at the back because I'm trying to limit how deep the desk was. I wanted it to be as you know compact as possible. So this is going to fit in my bedroom. Uh, you won't obviously won't be able to fit full size synthesizers up here unless you don't have this up against the wall. But you can have full length ones in the bottom portion of the rack space. So I ended up putting my desktop synthesizers further up. They're not as deep. So what I did here in the plot is each of these squares represents one inch. So I went point to point for all of my places here. You know, the bottom here is one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's six inches right there. And I made sure that all of the angles intercepted these crosses here because it would make the cutting of the wood easier later on. And, and we'll, we'll look at that. And up top here, we have our very upper panel here for the studio monitors and computer. I liked the vanity panels that the output desk had. So I made my own version here. So here it is here, going down here and here. So this is a box up here with three bays of 8U. The top part's shorter, the bottom part's longer. It goes all the way to here, and then there's a cutout bringing up higher just to help with cables to go through. And this channel, basically, when you have your MIDI controller up here, the wires will just drop down into this channel and then up. Anything that you have on your desktop up here, I have some drop-down holes, so well, they'd be further back right here. So if they have cables, they can drop down and then go behind this vanity panel so they're not they're hidden from view. And then up top here, I've got some holes for cable management so they can drop down. They're hidden behind this board here so you don't see them from the front either. I'll show you later on in the other page, but I made some indents on this board, the back of this board, three of them, one behind each of these for cables to be able to drop down without being exposed at the rear. Okay, so that's the basic idea here. Uh, zoom in on the dimensions. So if you want to see them. So we've got 34 inches deep. The height from the very bottom to the very top, 45 inches. And uh, so this is the side view of the desk, the studio desk. I did have a drawing of the front view, but I lost it. I built this desk about a year ago, and I have all the blueprints except for that front view. But that was just an overview. It's not the actual pieces, so you can still build it based on these blueprints. So I'm going to zoom in here. And you can see some of the angles, some trigonometry involved. <laughs> from this line to here, 50.2, 39.8 here. Um, so from the outside of this board to the outside of this board, 15.620, and then the inside, 14.12 inches. And that's with this being about, I think, 18 inches long, this one, and this one, 10 inches. 
and I have some support pieces here just to, for added support of this, just to help with the weight of anything on top of it. And similar to the output desk, double two pieces supply just to give it some extra sturdiness, make it more robust. There's the side view. Got rack space, got top part, desktop, drop downs, drop downs back behind this, sliding out tray thingamajig. It has enough height clearance here to fit uh, SL88 grand. That's what I designed it to fit. And you've got this outer piece, this inner piece, and this board here, separate board here for the tray. Additionally, this piece right here, this one, has a cutout like this, and it will help to cradle the rack. And so let's go on to the next slide. So since you don't have the, the front view of the desk, there was some calculations involved for how wide that sliding tray should be, the wood part. And if you go to get your sliders, they should have dimensions there for you. So you can see how, how tall it is and how thick between two, piece, two points it would be. So in this case, it was 0.51 inches or 12.9 millimeters. Yes, okay. And so that I, I added that into the calculation. And my sliders, I think they were rated, for, I can't remember, it's either 200 or 300 pounds that, that the sliders were rated for. So this is the upper desk deck and lower desk deck. I did a general rough cut of 61 inches by 18 inches for this piece of wood and 61 inches by 19 inches for the lower piece. Here you can see the dimensions. Uh, these will have angles cut into them because the rack space is going to be angled. So it's going to rest up against these faces here. So you've got 17 inches. And you can pause this if you need to, if you're trying to build the exact same design. So the lower piece is longer because this piece sits on top. This cut down where it angles downward, this point here will start here. So when both pieces are stacked, You've got one big angle going down the back side. And here are the cutouts for where the cables will drop down from the desktop. Here's the side 16 3 eighths of an inch or 60.375 inches for the length of both of those pieces. And again, as with all of these blueprints, each square represents one inch. So here's the top shelf, the one at the very, very top of the desk. This is the back side of it. So I'm going to have some drop downs here for cables, cable management. And right underneath this going across is a vanity piece and it also helps support this board. Top shelf support. There it is there. 60 and three eighths of an inch. Let me zoom in for you. 16 three eighths of an inch. There it is there. There's the, the height and the total width of the board. So it's a 61 inch by four inch piece of wood. And then, you know, you cut it to the right shape. And here is the side profile of that piece. Because essentially this is, this part right here is going to rest on the top of the backside of that triple bay rack, uh, like the heart of the desk, basically. So it's going to sit on top of that and it's going to go up and the cables are going to drop down on the back. There's the measurements 2.25, 3.15, I think there. And then the length of this from here to here is 0.9. You can see some angles here. And the upper deck, the top shelf is 15 inches by 61 and 7 eighths of an inch. Okay, so you have all the measurements there. 
And this I called the keyboard tray support panel. So I cut two pieces times two of nine inch by 18 inch pieces of ply. So we've got nine inches by 18. And the great thing about this grid is this. Um, this is 6.5 inches here. So when I got the rectangular piece of wood, I would mark over six and a half inches, make a mark, and then cut from that mark to the corner. So I needed two of those, one for either side of the keyboard tray. Here are the rack ends. So this is the middle portion of the desk, which has uh, the racks. Here's the front here. Here's the top, the bottom, and the, and the back side. And of course, this is gonna be tilted Imagine this tilted maybe 45 degrees or so to the right, clockwise. 7.18 inches, 14.12, 18 inches deep at the bottom, and 5.5 here. So again, when making this cut here, you just measure over 7.81 inch, make a mark, measure up from here, 5.5, make a mark, and then cut, uh, draw a line and cut that. So needed four of those. One for either end and two for in the middle to split up and split it up into three bays. So there's time, there's four of those. Here's the inner portion of the side pieces. Uh, what did I call this? Inner side panel. There we go. So I cut two pieces of 30 inch by 34 inch rectangles out of the plywood. And this was probably the most complex piece to cut. But using this grid diagram makes things much easier. So for example, imagine this being a rectangular piece and you're ready to cut it and you want to cut this part here. You would just measure over right here. How I got it marked 18 inches over, 19 inches up, make a mark. Then over here, it would be 18 plus six. And then down three inches from this mark, make a mark, and then draw lines, cut it. So this is the inner side piece. The, this will be supported by, or this will support the desktop here, the upper and lower panel. And this cutout here will basically cradle the weight of the three bay rack in, that makes the heart of the desk. There's some angles there, but instead of using a protractor, just measure this amount, make a mark, measure in this amount and down. Let's see, what would that be? One, two, three, four, five, you know, just like that. Make your, make your mark. And then you would just draw lines and cut. And that's it. So that's using a grid like this makes designing desks much easier to do it yourself. And... I highly suggest doing that. So there were two of these times two, 30 by 34 inch, cut those pieces, those rough cuts, and then make all these, you know, other cuts here. Do that two times. You zoom in here. I don't remember why all these calculations were down here, but I'll go ahead and show them in the video. I can't remember what that was being used for, but like I said, this was a year ago I built this, but there you go. Next blueprint. Okay, so this is the vanity panels that I needed. So we've got a upper vanity panel and a lower. It's one piece of wood, 59 inches by 12 inches and 59 inches by six inches. This lower vanity panel has nothing crazy about it. You just cut that piece, those dimensions, six inches by, you know, this. The rough cut was 59 inches, but then I would cut it down to that exact length there. So that's the rough piece being cut out. And then you go by this length here, uh, 58.875, or it's 58 and seven eighths of an inch. Additionally, on this upper vanity panel or the forward vanity panel to hide the wires and it helps make that channel for the wires to hide behind. Uh, I cut out these notches because the front part will go over the the keyboard desk support. The keyboard 
tray support side supports. So that those are the cuts there. And we'll just zoom in one more time here. These are the notches here. You'll see later in the video what, what that looks like, what that's for. Next blueprint is the outer side panels. So that weird jaggy looking one that cradles the three bay rack is on the inside of this. This is on the outside. So two pieces of wood, 44.25 inches by 34 inches. And then once that's done, you go from this corner up to 15 inches in, draw your line, cut it. And then here are the dimensions here. So that point is 22 inches up, 16 inches over. And then this point is eight inches in and looks like I didn't mark it. Okay, so that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that's, oh, there it is right there, 16. Okay, so this point is 16 inches high and eight inches over. So you mark those areas, draw the line, cut the wood out. And that's that. 34 inches, six, six, and a total of 44.25 or 44 and a quarter high. This one is the lower rack panel and upper rack panel. So this is building the heart of the desk, the rack. These are the upper and lower pieces of that. So for the lower, 61 by 18 inches, upper 61 by eight inches, this upper piece, you would then cut down to approximately 7.81 inch by 60 and 3 eighths. So this is the rough cut, just to cut it off the main big, huge piece of plywood. And then you would make your more precise cuts afterwards. So 60 and 3 eighths by 7.81 inches. And then this lower rack panel times one. So this lower rack panel, 61 by 18. And in the end, you'll cut it to 60 and 3 eighths long, 18 inches deep, have a little one inch coming in here, and then four by four. So in four, over four, make a mark, and in four, over four, make a mark, and then you'll draw the lines and cut that out. So that's the top part. So, you know, you, it'll help. Oh, this is the bottom part, sorry. So that's so cables can help go into that channel underneath without being visible from the side. And this upper rack panel, it does not show it in this blueprints, but I ended up scooping in, well not scoop, but uh, I cut little curved cutouts here, three of them, just to help with cable management and keep them tucked in. So I ended up doing that as well. It's not shown here, but you'll see it later on in the photos. Okay, so here's the keyboard deck for my 88 key MIDI controller. So that's a 57 by 16 inches rough cut uh, times one. And the keyboard backstop, the keyboard backstop. Okay, so I originally was gonna use a piece of plywood for the backstop for the keyboard, but then I decided I wanted to add additional structural support for that keyboard deck. So I ended up using, I think it was a one inch by one inch square aluminum tube, and I cut it to this length. To, I cut it to 56.355 inches, and then I drilled holes through it and bolted it to this piece, the backside of this piece. So it acts as a backstop. It helps stop this, this wood deck from bowing and just gives additional stability and support. Let me zoom out here. This is for your legs. I don't, I don't really find that my legs hit it anyway, but here it is. So it's 16 inches by 56.355. And that's a weird number because I had to factor in the, the, the width of the slides, the slides to slide it in and out. And that was a picture I showed earlier. So these are four, 12, 13. So 13 inches in, I make a mark. Then up another four inches in two inches, make a mark. And I did this kind of, instead of sharp corners, I curved it and made it more smooth. 
And so that's that. Okay, so let's check out the photos of the build. 